You're on, Kat. Welcome to the Cat Cannabis Show, everyone. I'm your host, Cat Cannabis, and this whole month of April is going to be Promote Dreams That Can Save Your Life Month. And so today, our guest is Dr. Kathy Kemper, and she is known as the modern day Dr. Spock. She's a pediatrician, but she's a pediatrician like none you've ever seen. And so we're going to be talking to her about the chapters that she put into Dreams That Can Save Your Life. And the book is about the early warning signs of cancer and other diseases, but it's also got these incredible stories about healing. And some of the stories are what Kathy wrote about children that she was taking care of in the hospitals and the dreams they had. So if you're a mother listening now, does your child dream? Do they have nightmares? Maybe it's a healing dream or a healing nightmare. So welcome to the show, Dr. Kathy Kemper. Thank you so much, Kat. It's wonderful to be with you. So, um, I, I'm just, uh, you know, the stories that you sent in were just amazing. One of them was I sprang a leak, and then you had one about I blew a fuse. So in your dream about I sprang a leak, you had been a little uncomfortable for a few days, and then you had this dream that you had sprung a leak. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I think the dream you're referring to is about a uh car's radiator springing a leak. Yes. And um, when I woke up, I wondered what that meant. And then within a few hours, it became clear because I developed a bladder infection. And I was leaking. And it was very (laughs) uncomfortable. But the dream had foretold that um, I think my unconscious knew before my conscious mind knew that there was a problem with my radiator or my bladder, as it were and uh, warned me that I needed to, to attend to that. And so did you, and, and were you fine after that? I did. I ended up needing antibiotics to take care of it, but I ended up being fine. Isn't it amazing how our, our body just kind of tells us what's going on in our dreams? It's like when we can shut off the rest of the world and just tune into ourselves in the dream world, it's like, boom, we get all this information. And sometimes it's very specific. I had another dream that I don't think is in this book, but it was very, very specific. I think it was after your book went to press. And it was a dream in which I was at a lecture and Dr. Andrew Weil was lecturing. And Dr. Weil is one of my heroes and role models. And at the end of his lecture, he looked down at me and he said, you need phosphatidylserine. And I said, what? And as he was walking away from the podium, he turned around and said, phosphatidylserine, write it down. And so I woke up with this command from Dr. Andrew Weil and looked up phosphatidylserine. And in fact, it is a supplement that's good for the brain. And I had recently been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So I immediately started taking phosphatidylserine on the basis of my internal Dr. Weil giving me advice. And how in the world did you remember that to get it back into your waking (laughs) world? How did you remember that? Well, I followed some of your advice. I keep a dream journal every day. I write down my dreams. And um, sometimes when I wake up, I begin praying for people that I know and love. And I find that by the time I finish my prayers, I've forgotten my dreams. So now I've started keeping my iPad where I keep my dream journal next to my bed. So as soon as I wake up, I write in the dream journal and then I lay back down and pray for people so that I can actually remember my dreams. Oh, my goodness. It, it, you know, your dream that you just told us about that, that isn't in this book is similar to another dream that is in this book. And this woman had uh, uterine cancer, and she had a dream. They, they gave her a very short period of time to live because she was actually in stage four. And uh, she had this dream about a spaceship. And the spaceship came down, and these little people came out of the spaceship and walked up to her and said quote, unquote, you need interferon. Remember that. You need interferon. So she was repeating this over and over again in her dream until she 
came back to her waking world, she went to see her doctor immediately and told him about the dream. Now, you know, we, we know that there are many doctors that don't necessarily believe in dreams, but fortunately hers did. And he said, that is a brand new drug that hasn't even been on the market yet, but I think I can get us some. And he put her on it and she's alive today to put her story in the book. So it's very similar to the dream you had. It's wonderful, isn't it, when it's so specific and not something that's in your conscious awareness. Right. Um, that we're all deeply connected somehow to the latest medical knowledge, and we can have access to that in our dreams. Yes. They, it's like we're connected to the universe, and the universe knows it all. Everything that we're coming into now, it's already happened, and they've got the answers for it. That just, you know, it just blows me away when I, when I hear about things like that. But they're all in this book. It's amazing. It's in this book. So <laughs> for those of you I've got who got my copy right you here, got your copy too. So those of you who are listening to the show, if you go to the Cat Cannabis, Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis uh, website, and if you buy a book this month or actually this week up until the 17th, you get 23% off. And you get a free gift on my website, which is uh, the first part of my 101 dream um, workshop. So I hope you guys will all go there and get it. So, um, Kathy, let's talk about also you had a, I love this one. I blew a fuse. That story had me laughing so hard when you were going up those stairs and, and there was the electrician in the hallway. Tell us about that story. Well, this was a dream uh, in which I was in my house, which was having some work done on it. And I went into one room where there was an electrician working on a fuse box, a circuit breaker box. And he said, please stop using the electrical devices while I'm working on the circuit breaker box. So you blow a fuse. <laughs> and when I woke up, what I realized he was talking about was a friend had recently lent me a pulsed electromagnetic field mattress device, a PEMF device called a Beamer to help with my symptoms. And I wasn't feeling that good on it, but I wasn't, you know, it was an expensive thing and I didn't want to just blow it off. But when the electrician said to use, stop using the electricity, that was a very clear signal that I needed to stop using it until he had re restored electrical service or else I would really blow this whole system wide open. So I stopped using the Beamer, gave it back to my friend with my thanks for allowing me to try it and haven't gone back to it since then. And, and did you, when you were using this, this instrument, did you feel anything? Did you feel different? Did you? I didn't feel better. I felt a little uneasy, but I didn't feel headache. I didn't feel nausea. I didn't feel terrible in any way. Mm -hmm. I just felt slightly uneasy and have you seen that electrician ever again in your dreams <laughs> <laughs> yes and he hasn't made another appearance so i listened to his advice i think i think things are okay now <laughs> that's amazing so um dr kathy camper you actually are a pediatrician uh you're a holistic pediatrician and um tell us a little bit w about what that means it means using all the available therapies to do what's best for a child and using evidence-based therapies that are safe and effective and including using dreams. I think one of the stories that's in the book is about a little girl I saw when I was a pediatric resident who was uh, a patient with cancer who had undergone a bone marrow transplant and my job as a pediatric resident was to go in every day and do a physical exam on her and make sure she was okay and not developing an infection because her immune system was so suppressed. One morning I went in bright and early to see her and instead of being grumpy as most children are when confronted with a physical exam first thing in the morning, she was happy, bouncing up and down in the bed. I said, what's, what's going on? Why are you so happy today? And she said, my counts are going up. I said, how do you know that? We haven't even drawn your blood yet. And she said, because I had a dream and the mercury in the thermometer was going up, 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 all the way up. And I, that means my counts are going up. And I said, isn't that nice? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, or you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we drew her blood and sure enough her white cat was going up and she was getting better she was recovering from her bone marrow transplant so that taught me a lot about how even children's dreams can be telling them important medical information and she interpreted her dream absolutely accurately and 
had the appropriate emotional response to it. Mm -hmm. And I have ever since then been asking children about their dreams because we want useful advice wherever it comes from, including dreams. So this child, you know, she, she interpreted her own dream because to her, the mercury in the thermometer going up, up, up meant she was, her white cell count was going up, 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 whereas somebody else possibly that interpreted that dream might have thought, oh my goodness, she is popping a fever. And that's why, so it just goes to show that we have our own dream language and our body and our mind speaks to us in that dream language. And sometimes we're the only ones that can really understand what it's saying. Somebody else might interpret it wrong. That's a really good point. Really good point. Because it would be easy to see an increasing mercury in a thermometer as indicating a fever, but she knew her own body and she knew her own dreams. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to parents who might um, who might have a child at home who talks about their dreams all the time? Would you tell the parents to 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 listen to those dreams or or just not not pay any attention to them? Oh, I think listen to them for sure. They're great sources of information, and they're often entertaining and funny and just a rich source of information directly from our unconscious. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about children who have really bad nightmares? Do you have any advice for them? Um, Yeah, there's a lot of different advice about nightmares. One of them is to um, have them reimagine the story with a different ending. So, for example, if there's a monster chasing them, instead of having the monster chase them and hurt them in some way, ask them to imagine if they were super Superman or had a Superman with them, what would the monster say to them? Maybe the monster's trying to get their attention about something. Maybe the monster's trying to tell them something. Maybe the monster will turn into a friend. Maybe the monster will have roller skates and a clown hat and have flowers growing out of his ears or something silly and not be so frightening, but be able to tell them, Um, something useful. Maybe sometimes a superhero will appear with them, or they will get their own cape, and then they'll be capable of dealing with the monster. So there are a lot of different endings that a dream could have besides being a scary dream. And it's helpful, I think, for children to have different options for dealing with those scary situations in their dreams to actually not ignore them or suppress them, but to get the information from them so that they're useful and not scary. I love the way you use the word cape and then capable, you know, put your cape on and then be capable because our dreams use a play on words all the time. You know, sometimes that's the only way we can bring them back because they rhyme and you have to rhyme it with something to get it back. So um, I know that you have written a couple of really fantastic books and you showed them to me just before we went live, everybody. Um, And so uh, can you uh, hold up a couple of your books and and just tell us a little bit about them and where we can go to get them? Sure. This one is Mental Health Naturally. And it's a book I wrote for the American Academy of Pediatrics on uh, natural approaches to improving mental health. I just had it out today because I'm writing another book and I needed some of the tables that were in this one. Um, And then the most recent book is called Authentic Healing, which is my story about um, my experience over 20 years learning energy medicine and how to use energy medicine in pediatrics and with adults. Wow. And And where can our audience find them? Both Authentic Healing and Mental Health Naturally are available on Amazon.com, at Barnes & Noble, and you can order them through your bookstore. Great. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on the show with us tonight. It's amazing how quickly the time goes, especially when we're, we're talking about something as interesting as dreams. So uh, I hope that the audience will tune in again next Tuesday because this whole month is going to be Dreams Month. And then the following month, May, is going to be All IASD Dream Month, which is the International Association for the Study of Dreams. I'm going to be interviewing all the speakers. It's going to be really really great. So I hope you'll tune in again next Tuesday. Until then, remember, everybody dreams, but some dreams save lives. Good night, everyone. Thank you for being with us, Kathy. My pleasure. Good night.